All right. Well, a major case in Australia will decide what a woman is. More specifically, they will decide if this person is a woman. This is a biological man who goes by the name of Roxanne Tickle and insists that by looking at this person, you should know that they are a woman. In this post from uh, the Facebook page that Roxanne Tickle uh, puts forward. Roxanne Tickle. Yes, that's, I mean, it's so <laughs> feminine. I, I thought you said pickle. I was like, that's. No. Uh... I mean, they're going through the feminization of themselves. In that first picture I showed you, um, they said, you know, I've done all the electrolysis of my when beard. You say they, how many? Just a Roxanne Tickle said that. Okay. Roxanne Tickle said. Is a man who said this, that because of, you can see all the electrolysis that the beard that would naturally grow on that face is not growing back. I, I know the pronoun issue is is sensitive. I, I am trying to refer to this person as a biological man, but I want to make sure that I don't get punished on YouTube. That's why I'm doing that. I'm not trying to promote any ideology. I'm not going to use the preferred pronouns of Roxanne Tickle because that person is not a part of my group. I am a she. That person is not, but I'm not going to refer to the pronouns that they are so that I don't get punished on YouTube, not because I subscribe to the ideology. Are we clear? I just don't want to get in trouble for it. I don't agree with it. That's what I'm doing. Don't give me shit for it. Okay, so here's the case now that uh, is in federal court. Transgender woman Roxanne Tickle seeks $200,000 in damages in the first federal court case based on gender discrimination. The reason this is happening is because Tickle did all that work for transition, all the surgeries, all of that stuff, and then tried to create an account on Giggle, which is a women-only social network in Australia. The They were so excited, Roxanne Tickle was, to go out and play woman, and then they got their account suspended because Roxanne Tickle is not a woman. And so... He decided to sue. Um, what Roxanne Tickle wants is $200,000 in damages for her distress and hurt after sending email after email. My account's closed. What happened? I'm a woman. I should have access to this women-only space. So not only am I going to send an email if I'm Roxanne Tickle, I'm going to find the CEO and call her repeatedly and harass her and send eight emails until I get my way and get back on this social network. Uh, in fact, the CEO, Sal Grover, this is her, says that she felt like she was being stalked by this person and she didn't like it. Here's what her lawyer says, uh, says Miss Grover saw a man and felt harassed and intimidated by this person. Oh, this person's profile, I perceive a man and so I'm not gonna answer the phone because this is very intimidating. Roxanne Tickle's lawyer says that's nonsense because obviously Roxanne Tickle is a woman. And if they're really a woman, you don't even have the right to be threatened. Here's what their barrister or lawyer says that um, Sal Grover would have answered those emails and calls if Roxanne Tickle was a woman for bir from birth. The lawyer says it's clear Miss Tickle is a woman because she had gender affirmation surgery. She presents to the world as a woman. She's recognized as a woman at her workplace, socially, and in her sports. It's not an easy Wait, thing. What? Yeah. What kind of athlete? Like, she doesn't look very athletic. Just, just throwing <laughs> like, it out there. Does not look bowling. Like... I don't know. <laughs> in, in her sport, in, in, uh, in mini golf. Sure, I don't care. Yeah. Um, but I don't want to go up against Roxanne Tickle in any kind of combat sport. I'd be a little bit afraid. Uh, let's go back to this quote saying it's not easy. It's not an easy thing. This is the lawyer of Roxanne Tickle. It's not an easy thing to find yourself feeling that your gender is woman when you've been born a male. No, because you're not. That's, that's why that's not easy, because it's a lie. So now, if you're a woman, you cannot be threatened. You can't say, I feel threatened by this man because that man says they're not a man. That's what this case is. That's why it's such That's a big deal, crazy. right? So if you knew that it was a woman, you would have answered those emails and you should have known it was a woman girl. And so that's your bad. Sal Grover, the CEO of Tickle, is having none of this. The CEO of Tickle? Uh, of Gr Giggle. Sorry. <laughs> it's a cutesy name I'm getting. Tickle, tickle, tickle and Giggle. Right. All right.
The well, that's numbers. what's trending is tickle versus giggle, like oh hashtag. You can follow it yourself. Uh, so anyway, this real woman, Sal Grover, she's having none of this. This is her lawyer, Brittany Nolan. And I want to read you the argument she made in court this week about how her client has the right and instinct of a woman to feel threatened by a man. And that's what she's asserting here is that I can feel threatened by a man and say I'm feeling threatened by a man. And I don't have to pretend that the person that's threatening, threatening me is a woman. And this is my right. She said in court, this is a transcription. Uh, what is a woman if thinking one is a woman means one is a woman? A woman is not a thought. Uh, she says that both sexes can shop on both sides of the aisle. In our society, she says, I'm going to skip a little bit. And you, it, you should pause this screen and read it for yourself because it's beautiful. She says, when a woman who is biologically born, and always so, whether she has had her reproductive organs removed or not, whether, whether she thinks she's a male or not, when she walks through a dark park in the middle of the night, she doesn't stop and think, I wonder what side of Kmart this person shops from. Have they had their facial hair removed? Have they told people in the workplace whether they're a woman or not? She doesn't do that. She doesn't stop for one second to do that. She senses instinctively when she perceives to be a threat, she tightens her fingers around her keys and she speeds up. If a man truly had the psychology of a woman, he would know that and not enter female-only spaces. This proves that the applicant lacks the psychology of a woman, that the applicant is not a woman. Because if you are threatening somebody else, you know, that's based on, you know this, right? Obviously, this is a high-stakes case in Australia, and it will set a precedent for whether or not a woman can one thing is to have access to single sex spaces, but also whether or not you can report men who are threatening well, you. When, so, yeah, go ahead. And also, I just want to say, like, so if he went, he went after the CEO for this, let's say he was allowed on the site and then was talking to women and women like, hey, you're not a woman. This, this person would have just been going after every single person that said, and, and with the laws that are changing that can put people in jail for misgendering and things like that, mm -hmm. this would have been a person on there just attacking anybody they could to try to get money, to try to get people, you know, like, it's insane. Well, beyond that, just attacking people online, think about if you report someone who's threatening you as a woman and you say, this man is threatening me in my house, in my workplace, on my devices, and that man can say, actually, I'm not a man. I'm a woman, so you're fine because it's my right to say that I'm a woman. Therefore, I'm not threatening you. Think of the implications this has for real women's safety. Now, right now, this case is with the judge and, in my opinion, with God. Uh, this is Sal Grover's post about this. And quite honestly, it chokes me up because she says, this is my legal team. I've done my best. Uh, now, you know, we're just going to rest and, you know, She's it, and the the part that she says here, she says there isn't a woman in the world who'd have taken me to court for this. It takes a man for this case to exist, and I agree with her. Her lawyer, the woman on the left in the blue pantsuit named Catherine Devis Morgan, says between them and all the counsel, they have seventeen daughters. She says we do this for them and all the little girls and women who do not have a voice. Now, here are some women who showed up at this trial this week to talk about it uh, from Australian live streamer Chris Coveries. This is about two minutes long. I think these women are worth listening to all the way through. You call yourself a woman and you're not female, you're a liar. Hi. Morning. Morning. Looking forward to the day. I'm from Sale, Victoria. I'm from Townsville, North Queensland. And I'm from Ballarat in Victoria. This is not a quick 20 minute drive. Why have you come? Why is this case so important that you've come hours, days to travel? Why is this so important? Because they're our sex based rights. Women have lost every single area of single sex, uh, the ability to gather only with women. To declare that you can be uh, a woman simply by cutting off your penis, either uh, cutting off your penis or not inverting it to make a pretend vagina. Women have vaginas to give birth, it's our birth canal. The public have no clue about how important this is, what their actual uh, women's sex-based rights are being challenged. This is the constitutional yeah. sex versus gender identity case. 
and it has international implications to a lot of women who have been working really hard to fight this nonsense for years that this is a giant court case in that respect. Um, I came this far because um, say nobody knows it's happening, none of the media, mainstream media have actually covered it up until this point apart from Rita Panahi, go Rita. Yeah. Um, no one else mentioned it until yesterday when it started, so nobody knows it's occurring. People walking past this courthouse don't know it's occurring, and it affects every woman in Australia um, and potentially across the world. And for Sal to know that we are here outside the court spreading the message and just offering support is the most important thing we can do. Yep. Lovely. Thanks for your time. Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome. All right. Well, they are absolutely right. The media has ignored this up until this week. Now it is getting some mainstream media coverage in Australia, at least. And it's a really important ruling. I've been following this case by the great publication Redux. That's R-E-D-U-X-X is a great place for the sanctity of women's rights and the absurdity of transgender men who claim the access to women's spaces. So uh, this is a case that has been going on for quite a long time. It's traumatic for this woman who just wants to run a women-only social networking app and is taken to court. So uh, it's an important ruling. It will have international implications, whether or not a woman can say this man is threatening me and I don't participate. There was a similar case in the UK about five years ago that launched the whole Myra Forstater case where a woman was assaulted at a trans activist rally by a trans person who put on his Facebook that he wanted to go F up some turfs, went there and did exactly that, punched a woman in the face. The woman sued, but she didn't get monetary comp compensation, even though she was found that the transgender person was guilty of those things. But because she didn't use his preferred pronouns, she didn't get any monetary compensation and she got lectured by the judge for not using his pronouns. So that was in the UK about five years ago. These things are happening to women. And so it deserves our full attention. Let us know what you think of this uh, in the chat below. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. You know, YouTube thinks that you'll actually like this next video right here. It's personalized based on your own viewing habits. So if you watch the video, please leave a comment. Let us know what you think about it. And we will see you next time, everyone.